Welcome to the Better Together podcast, where we look for ways we can work together to advance the cause of Christ among Free Will Baptists. So today I have with us Mr. Jimmy Lawson. He's the promotional director for the state of Michigan. And I also have Brother Mike Trimble. He's the pastor of the Kirby Church there in Michigan and also uh, head of the mission board yes. in the state of Michigan. I should also say Jimmy is pastoring a church community uh, Free Will Baptist Church in the uh, Michigan area as well. So, hey guys, thanks for stopping in and joining us on the Better Together podcast. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. You're welcome. Glad to be here. Hey, well, tell me what is happening in Michigan these days. Uh, we've got a lot of new and exciting things going on right now. Um, we've got a few international missions, uh, things that's going on within our state. And uh, the Lord has brought international missions home. And so we have a uh, outreach right now uh, with a group with, from uh, Bangladesh. And they have a ministry there in Michigan as well as across the river there in Canada. Uh, as well as some churches in Bangladesh that we are partnering with. And uh, it's just been exciting to see all of that come to fruition and uh, we are we are thrilled to be able to be part of an international ministry right there at home. Mm -hmm. So our listeners know we're focused as Free Will Baptist until 2030 on reaching, training, and giving. Mm -hmm. And so what you guys are doing in Michigan is you're looking at the world, how it's come to your doorstep, and you're trying to reach these people with the gospel. And e so e exactly, uh, you know, in our area we have the largest gathering of Arabic-speaking people outside of the Middle East, Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, Hamtramck, and it just kind of spills over into Warren and other areas. And yet, Jimmy and I have tried for years to try to make an inroad into that culture, and it's tough because we're not of that culture. And now we have the opportunity that people from that culture know Christ as their Savior, and they are doing an incredible job at reaching the culture, making an impact for Christ, uh, not only in the Detroit, but even right across the, the river, Detroit River in Canada. In Canada. And so you guys have been trying the culture. You've got language barriers and so forth. And we're not saying that we don't try to do that. Absolutely. But what you're saying is you've got believers from that culture, and you have partnered with these yes. believers. And that has really made the difference, hasn't it? No, oh, absolutely. There, There's only so much, I believe, that... I can accomplish uh, in trying to reach uh, Arab, Muslim individuals. Um, but when you have somebody who has come out from them, who's been saved, who has recognized uh, that the only true hope is in Christ, uh, and they know the culture, they know what they've been taught, they are much more able to impact their culture mm -hmm. uh, than, than what we can be. Sure, and it doesn't relieve us of our responsibility, um, but it's just simply they can do it better, and mm -hmm. we want to come alongside them and encourage them and resource them uh, best way we can and be very supportive of them. Very good. Yeah. And so we've, uh, we've got this little report called Know Your Community, which we partner with Church Answers with. So a listener, a pastor, a lay people, they could be listening in and say, I wonder just who is in my community. Right. You can know yes. with some very good accuracy who is there. Mm -hmm. And then as churches, you can seek to reach them. And many of the folks that you and these believers you're working with are reaching, you can't go to where they're at and reach them with the gospel safely for sure. Right. Exactly. Can I just say a word about the survey? I would encourage pastors to do this. Because we do this on a consistent basis at our church. Just privately, we don't make it public. But yeah. I just want to make sure that we're mirroring or matching our community. Because in Detroit, at one time, uh, it was a very different ethnic group of people than it is now. And we have a lot of churches. Well, how many churches? Three or four still in downtown Detroit. And the, the ethnicity of the church doesn't ma match the community. And right. so there's this, this disconnect. 
So they drive in, have church, and drive home, not able to reach their community or really not even knowing how to try. So it's really important to keep up with your community. That's great. And so we'll help you with that. If you're yeah. interested, send us an email at questions at nafwb.org. Mm-hmm. And you may say, well, these are two guys from Michigan. I'm in Alabama or California, wherever, wherever I'm at. You know, one of the things we've learned is you sometimes have more in common if you're in Florida than with somebody from Michigan than somebody else in Florida. And we can try to help you, these folks who've taken this particular report, we can try to help link you all together. Hey, what do you do to meet this particular mm-hmm. group? and reach them, and we can kind of make those things happen. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it's interesting to note that those that you assume are in your community might not be those that are actually there. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was surprised to find out that we have a large Cameroon mm-hmm. uh, community there in the Detroit metro area. And, uh, and I realized how large it was when we had a gentleman and his family come into our church And then one Sunday after church, I saw him and another lady that were back there talking, and she was from Cameroon. Um, So I went back and asked him, did you all know each other before you came to America? Did you meet here? And their answer was, we just met this morning at church. Uh, Uh, And so, you know, we began to realize, you know, this is a much bigger population, and many of them are French-speaking. And so, uh, you know, this gentleman from our church has started a French-speaking Bible study. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got about 10 to 12 that meets with him regularly um, to begin a Bible study reaching out to those individuals. And so, you know, again, there in the Detroit metro area, uh, God has opened the doors for us to be able to have a... Um, inroad to the Cameroon community as well as an inroad uh, to the Bangladesh community. And uh, so God has brought international missions to us. Mm-hmm. And you know we got to realize you know, people can say what they want uh, and try to make things political. The reality is we have people from all over the world coming to us. Yeah. And we've got to do our part in just reaching them where they are with the message of the gospel. Absolutely. And that's the only thing that's going to make a difference. You know, sometimes I wonder if the Lord brought them to us, you know, or us to them, you Uh know, just so that we can... Reach them. Exactly. Right. So Acts 1-8, still there? Absolutely. And uh, I think I heard someone say before, uh, we wouldn't go to them, or we maybe couldn't go to them, and God's brought them to us. Absolutely. And so that's what we have an opportunity to do right now. Yeah. And it's best for us, too, because they're in leadership, they're in the community, and and so forth. So that's one thing you're doing to reach the world right there in Michigan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys are also working on the training or discipling and giving goals as well, because you've got some things happening with, I think, a church that's been in existence for a while, haven't, haven't aren't you? Uh, yes, uh, we have a church in Ypsilanti, Michigan, that uh, uh, has gone through some difficulties and some struggles. And uh, so now uh, they are in the process of having a replant uh, there in, in Ypsilanti. And that's just right outside of the Ann Arbor area where the University of Michigan is. And uh, so it's a large area with a lot of different people to draw from. And uh, I believe we've, you know, they, they've identified the uh, family to come. And uh, it is exciting to see, you know, a new, it's not a new church plant, but it's a replant. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and, and sometimes, uh, sometimes you need a fresh start. And, uh, and, and I will go ahead and say along those lines, that's, you know, sometimes that's what needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, in order for a church to be able to take that next step forward, you know, we kind of have to stop, reevaluate, reexamine, and then you know, have a fresh start so that you can go forward and better impact your community where you are. All right. And as part of that, you're engaged in quite a bit of training. Uh, at the leadership conference, uh, we had Tom Rayner talk about fostering and adapting or adopting and so mm-hmm. forth. So you've got a lot of that happening where training is taking place from other churches. Uh, we think about the Donaldson Church and even in Nashville has helped mm-hmm. with that. So. Sure. Absolutely. 
and, and, and that's exciting to see churches just coming together mm-hmm. uh, because you know we we are not isolated by ourselves, um, but you know we, we are all part of a bigger family, and uh, and we can obviously do a whole lot better as we labor side by side, uh, coming along you know with each other. That's good. Mm-hmm. And so we think about maybe my church has more resources or and maybe even uh, a lot of folks are equipped with spiritual gifts. Basically, it sounds like you're using some of that's happening in the Ypsilanti example where those folks are kind of going in and doing some retraining and so forth to reach that community more effectively. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that seems to be you know, the, the, the plan in place. And while the church has been "quote unquote" shut down mm-hmm. uh, over the last several months, uh, there's still been you know a core group that has stayed together, and they've been meeting weekly, and they've been receiving training on what do we do, how do we relaunch, mm-hmm. what is necessary uh, in order to have a successful relaunch. Because if all we do is shut down a church and then reopen it, and everything stays the same, right? We've not accomplished anything, yeah. And so I think that that training is crucial if you're going to see that that change take place. And the training, for the large part, is just by coming by Sunday after Sunday, going through the Book of Acts mm-hmm. and just looking at the New Testament church. Go figure that we would use the Bible to find out about <laughs> church, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, and just looking at it and saying, okay, how can we take its truth and its timeless principles and apply it to our culture today? Yes. You know, a very. Uh, Northern culture, which is different than Alabama. Yeah. I was going to say Florida, but half of Michigan is in Florida in January, February, and March. Yes. And, uh, but it's, uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for churches to partner together. And I would even say even across state lines. I mean, we're the ones who, for just the purpose of, of uh, organization, divvied everything up by states. But we can even cross state lines yes. to help one another for, with people who have resources and abilities to come and, and help. Excellent. And you guys, as going through this, will actually be kind of a model. You'll be a good resource you know, for how to do some of these things for people that are listening in and they're looking at the situations they're in. Well, how could we do this? And they can pick up a phone or shoot you an email and you'll help them, won't you? Well, absolutely. That, that's one of the things that we, you know, our prayer is that through everything with yeah, you know, from the Ypsilanti Church to Cameroon to Bangladesh, is that others will begin to realize, you know, we, we can reach out to those international individuals that's right around the corner. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we, Brother Mike and I were talking earlier about being the crash test dummies. Yeah. He didn't appreciate that. Nope, but. Nope. But not the crash check dummy guy, boy. but the but the reality is, uh, you know, we learn by doing, and then we learn by what others have done. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, if there's a way that we can be a help to anyone else in a similar situation, we we by all means would love to sit down, talk with them, uh, show them what's gone well. Show them what hasn't gone too well, yeah. and uh, you know, and, and you know, do what we can to you know help them along the way as well. You know, part of the growing too that you're emphasizing is that we've got to step out of our own comfort box and say, okay, this is a different era. This is a different. We've come through a pandemic, and now there's this, you know, looming crisis in in Europe that's on the scene that's going to be here a while, I think. And so we've got to learn how to navigate this. So we, it, the times almost demand we get out of our comfort zone. Does that mean you're going to make mistakes? Yes. Does that mean it's not going to run smooth all the time? Certainly. But the payoff and the benefit and, and the way that the kingdom of God can take off and advance in that is absolutely incredible. And so we're willing to, to be crash dummies <laughs> right here and uh, buckle up. It's going to be a good ride. That's right. Well, hey, we appreciate you bringing your ride through this way and uh, and sharing with us a little bit today. And we're excited about what's happening in Michigan. Mm-hmm. And I think you're right. I think you're spot on. This this is it's challenging what we're experiencing, but it also is when people make changes. Sure. It's an the opportunity. opportunities there. And, and, yeah. and it's exciting to see 
new things happening. Yes. And mm. uh, and again, it's because we had to break out of our comfort zone. Right. That that we're seeing, man, th- this is something that's exciting, something that's fresh, and uh, and and sometimes you know, these things is what it takes to give you a shot in the arm. So you know what, you know, God God's kingdom is still advancing. Absolutely. And and things are going good. Well, thank you, guys. We appreciate what you're doing. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Appreciate what you guys are doing here. Absolutely. And we want to thank you all that are listening today. Thank you for listening in on the podcast. Think about someone you might share it with and someone that might be interested. Share it with them. And remember, when we work together for the cause of Christ, we truly are better together. Thank you for joining us today.